Hello everyone, this is Deborah Richardson and today I am putting the AP in Happy where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. This podcast will give a voice to accounts payable team members by talking about the growing reality of cyber attacks in their world and which vendor setup and vendor management techniques they can apply to protect the vendor master file from fraud. So if you and or your team are still taking phone calls and receiving vendor supporting documentation via email, you need to authenticate that you are talking or communicating with your vendor. Please visit DeborahRRichardson.com slash authentication where you will find a workshop on how to build an authentication reference. This is the answer to the question, are you communicating with your vendor or with a fraudster? Learn more today at Deborah R. Richardson slash authentication. If you or your team are currently storing and maintaining vendor banking in your accounting system or ERP, you'll want to hear my answer to an email question regarding risk. Keep listening. Welcome to episode 107. Are you putting your vendor's banking at risk in your vendor master file? I recently had a question come into my email asking if they were putting their vendors at risk by storing the vendor's banking information in the vendor master file of their accounting system or ERP. And it was a little strange because it the person did not offer like the current scenario, like what triggered the question, who was asking from their firm. And this was coming from a controller. Um, and so there may have been an event that triggered the question, but you know, that was not um, there. It was just two sentences, one of which was the question. And my answer was maybe. So to understand my answer, let's first look at why your vendor banking may be at risk. And starting with payment solutions. So payment solutions, um, you're probably aware they do exist today where all you need to do is send them a payment file without vendor banking and yay, that does not have to be formatted or converted with third party middleware in order to be accepted by the bank. And in order for that to work, it means that the payment solutions provider, the third party, stores the remit information. And in some cases, those third party providers will also retain the liability for any fraudulent payments, as well as handle the payments to the vendors, including updates to their remittance information. And so they may pay the vendor by ACH, they may pay the vendor by um, by uh, wire, by check, by virtual card. But the point is, is that they handle that piece. They reach out to the vendor um, and they identify the, the best payment um, solution. And it could be a, a, a great way for you to uh, 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 earn those rebates, right? Because if you've got vendors that um, will accept um, uh, a card versus, you know, an ACH or a check, um, then you may be able to earn some rebates and you don't have to do the vendor um Uh, email campaigns or the vendor campaigns to onboard them uh, to the different payment methods. So it could be a great time saver for you, a great way to to earn some rebates, along with the fact, again, what we're talking about today, that you do not have to store the banking information for your vendors in your accounting system or ERP. All you need to send these third-party providers is the invoice information and and other data required data in your payment file and 
There are also uh, e-invoicing and other solutions out there that also allow the vendor to maintain and store their banking information in those tools as well. So it doesn't have to be a payment solutions provider. It can be an e-invoicing or other types of solutions um, that still allow the vendor to store their banking in those tools. And if either of those are your scenario, there may be no need to retain the vendor banking information in the vendor master file. Now, how much time would you or your team save with not having to do vendor banking updates, not having to do the confirmation calls? If you do pre-notes for new bank accounts, or change bank accounts, not having to do the pre-notes for those bank updates or new bank accounts. Not to mention, you may be able to remove the payment fraud risk. But for those that do not yet have a payment solution or an e-invoicing or other solution that will allow the vendor to maintain and store their banking information. And by the way, it was obvious that the AP practitioner that asked the question did not. Your vendor banking may be at risk due to one, the risk in the collection of vendor data and two, the risk from any unauthorized access to the accounting system or ERP, which is why my answer was maybe, because if you're not mitigating those risks, then yes, your vendor's banking information could be at risk in your vendor master file of your accounting system or ERP. So let's then talk about how to mitigate those risks. Starting with the collection of bank details, if you are receiving your vendor's banking information via email, then you need to authenticate the data source, which I talked about in the intro to this podcast episode. And this is where you need to verify that it is the real vendor by asking questions. The same way your bank authenticates you when you call. Only once they authenticate do you continue with their uh, request. Now, if employees external to AP or vendor maintenance collect the documents on behalf of the vendor, um, you don't know if they got it from crook.com. So you also want to add authenticating using or authentication using the data. Require the old bank details, the tax ID, and address that matches um, the information on the vendor record on your own branded ACH form. So you want to make sure you authenticate the data source, but if you can't authenticate the original data source, because you can authenticate the employee, especially if they come in, um, uh, if you have that external Uh, indicator on your email and they come in through your uh, email uh, company email domain you can authenticate the employee but you still have not authenticated the original data source so you can then authenticate using data and also there's nothing wrong with doing both um, if you do get your information from directly from vendors Anyway, so you do want to um, mitigate that risk of collecting data via email by using authentication. And then um, if you have though a a vendor self-registration portal, that has built-in authentication, right? Vendors are or your internal employees are authenticated by logging in and entering their user credentials, um, hopefully also coupled with um, multi-factor authentication each time or during um, certain scenarios. For example, if they sign in from an IP address that they haven't signed in before, um, that should trigger MFA, or there can be other scenarios that trigger MFA, but that should be um, Um, an option. So the collection of banking details needs the authentication if it's via email, the source, authenticating the data. If it's via a vendor self-registration portal, you've got the built-in authentication with the login credentials.
So let's now look at mitigations for storing your vendor data in the vendor master file of the accounting system or ERP. So the first one is least privilege access. Make sure you limit who has access to view and edit the vendor banking information. And make sure you put some type of a review process in place so that you don't just do it once and then it never gets looked at again because people leave um, uh, the company, people transfer within the company, and sometimes the access is not uh, taken away or changed uh, efficiently or um, at all in some cases. So make sure you put some type of a review schedule in place. The next one is segregation of duties. Um, ensure that no one employee can create a vendor, create an invoice, and generate a payment. And then the next one is mask critical information. So only show the last four or five digits of the bank account number um, and tax ID for that matter. Um, this gives access to those in AP that can take calls from vendors or even employees that want to confirm that they're dealing with the right vendor or the right vendor record in the vendor master file. They only need the last four or five digits. And then the next one is to validate bank account ownership. So in addition to validating bank branch information, such as the ABA um, routing number, the SWIFT or uh, the big numbers, also validate bank ownership. And I will have a link to the uh, accompanying blog for this podcast in the show notes. And within that blog, um, you'll see a link to a blog post free and paid resources to validate vendor bank details if you like more information on how to do that or more options on how to validate um, bank branch information and bank account ownership. Now, the last one is definitely to clean up your vendor master file. You know I am an advocate of that. I recommend this is done um, monthly quarterly or at least uh, annually. You need to inactivate those vendors you haven't done business with in 15, 18, or 24 months. And then those vendors that remain your active um, vendors, you need to revalidate the bank branch information because banks merge, they get acquired, and your vendor will never, never tell you. Um, as well as if you have an account for bank account ownership, you need to, to, uh, to revalidate that as well. So clean up your vendor master file, um, inactivate old vendors and the remaining vendors. Make sure you validate that banking information that's in your vendor master file. So yes, if you retain your vendor's banking in your accounting system or ERP, you could be putting your vendors at risk. But I've shared some mitigation strategies to offset. Now, these can be a long-term solution or a short-term solution until you can find a third-party provider for payment solutions or e-invoicing tools that can store the vendor's banking and possibly absorb the risk and allow you to eliminate the handling and storing of vendor banking. So thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed the 107th episode of the Putting the AP in Happy podcast, where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Don't forget to check the show notes for the links mentioned in the podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and writing a review of my podcast on the platform that you use to listen. Stay happy. Stay happy.